Welcome everyone to this segment on ethics in artificial intelligence for earth observation. My name is Mrinalini Kochupile, also Nalini for short. I am a guest professor at the Technical University of Munich Data Science and Earth Observation Department and I am also an affiliated researcher with the Institute for Ethics in AI. I welcome you to join this session with an open mind. While many of you might indeed be pure scientists who have never come across ethics, we will start, therefore, in this lecture with an understanding of basic concepts. Are you ready? Let's go. We will look at basic concepts in this segment under the following titles. The terms we will cover are ethics, ethical issue, ethical dilemma, ethical decision making, ethical opportunity and ethical risk, as also ethical theories and approaches. Let's dive into the first term, the term ethics. Let's pause the video here for a moment and write down in your notebook, what does the word ethics mean to you? You can also note down what does the word ethics mean to you in the context of your daily research. Take a moment to write it down. What was your answer? Perhaps your answer was, that ethics is just about right and wrong. You are right. Ethics is about right and wrong, distinguishing between right and wrong, distinguishing between good and bad, between what is an ought and what is an ought not. Beyond these very broad ideas, there is a concrete golden rule of ethics that applies across the globe, across all cultures. And this golden rule is, don't do to others what you wouldn't want others to do to you. Simple enough, right? The question is, how would you apply this very abstract golden rule to your daily research? This is what ethics is here to help you with. with this ethics lecture is here to help you with. Going on, ethics also comprises of three basic principles, what are also known as the three foundational principles of business ethics, which are honesty, integrity, and fairness. Now you might say these are equally abstract. Don't worry, we look at them. Maybe you want to already take a minute, pause the video and ask yourself, in what way do these three terms, honesty, integrity, and fairness, have an impact on your daily research? Going on to the next term, which is ethical issues. What is an issue? If you ask yourself, an issue is anything that people are discussing or debating. An ethical issue has two sides, just like two sides of a coin. On the one side of an ethical issue is an ethical risk. And on the other side is an ethical opportunity, which means that by doing any action, you might have some positive outcomes and some not so positive outcomes. And this combined creates an ethical issue. It's important for us to understand here that ethicists operate and are required when we are faced with an ethical issue. Because if we are fully on the right side, that is by doing an action, if you can only accomplish good, then one would say, just do it. While if doing something will only give a bad consequence, then one would simply say, don't do it. But if doing an action can bring about some good and some not so good, that's when the ethical issue arises and you need to think about ethical decision making. So when we are dealing with an ethical issue, that's when we need to look at ethical approaches. But before we go there, we look at one more concept and that is the concept of an ethical dilemma. Here you see an image of a trolley. A trolley, the trolley, if it swerves right, it will kill one person. While if it stays on course, it is likely to kill four people. So an ethical dilemma is an issue such as this with no matter which decision is taken or which side the decision goes, 
there is an unhappy consequence. That is, there's going to be one or the other negative consequence. And usually then dilemmas are often resolved as trying to accomplish the least of the harms. So you might say, well, the trolley should stay on course. The trolley should not stay on course, but should swerve right, because in doing so, then only one person dies. While if it stays on course, four people will die. A simple utilitarian approach. But what if the four people who are there are extremely elderly and close to death, while the person on the right is a child who is just starting his life? Would you say the selection should, should be the same? Maybe there are different answers amongst yourself and those who are sitting with you right now. This is an interesting ethical dilemma and is called the trolley dilemma. Here also we come across a very interesting concept called ethical relativism. You might be interested in knowing that this trolley dilemma was subject to extensive research which got published, who, the findings of the research got published in a recent Nature article. The scientists interviewed hundreds of thousands of people across the globe and asked them the question that if you are sitting in an autonomous vehicle, a self-driving car, and you have the option of swerving right to save a young child or swerve left to save an elderly person, which way would you swerve? Interestingly, what they found was that in the eastern part of the world, people largely chose to save the elderly person, while in the western part of the globe, they largely chose to save the child. You can see here that both decisions are equally ethical in the light of the culture in which a person is raised. So this concept is called cultural relativism. So often in ethics, we don't have a clear right-wrong answer. The right-wrong is also about the context. Here then I want to give you a second example. Maybe you already heard about this example if you've been surfing the internet. So it's a hypothetical. If you're standing, imagine you're driving your car and you're alone in your car, but you have only one other seat. It's a crazy storm out there. And the prediction is that it'll go on for hours and likely cause a lot of damage. You drive past a bus stop where you see there are three people waiting in the bus stop. You know that the bus is either extremely late or probably cancelled given the weather conditions. Who are you going to give a ride from amongst these three people? You know, you know two of these people. The first person is your best friend who once saved your life. The second person is the love of your life who you've been waiting for an opportunity to talk to. And the third person is an elderly woman who very urgently needs to be rushed to the hospital for medical care. Who are you going to take with you in your car and rescue? Take a moment to think about it. Now, it's very interesting that to respond to such an ethical question, in the West and in the East, we have different ethical approaches. Let's look into some of these approaches. In the Western part of the world, Two of the most dominant approaches to ethical decision making are the so-called duty-based approaches and consequence-based approaches. The duty-based approaches, also con called deontological approaches, ask questions such as, what is my duty in this circumstance? The consequentialist approach will ask, what are the consequences going to be of my action? And based on that, decide which course of action to adopt. There are also combined approaches that look into both of these and say both the duties and the consequences need to be taken into account. So now let's go back to our three people on the bus stop. Imagine you're a bus driver that is driving a whole bunch of students back from school in the storm. Will you stop and take on all three people into your bus and give them also a ride? Let's apply the consequentialist approach first. You would say, if I don't stop, then these three people will die. So maybe I should take them on board. While if you apply the deontological approach, you might say, it is not my duty to take these three people on board. My duty is to take these kids back home at the earliest possible. 
So you can see that by applying these two approaches, you can actually reach two different ethical outcomes. So these approaches also might not necessarily give you a very clear answer. Let's go back to this image now, as you see. Interestingly, you, I found these images while I was visiting LA recently. I, uh, I would like you to think about what these images are signifying. Take a moment and do that. You will see that in these images, the US immigration is trying to promote facial recognition, which requires a great deal of compromise to personal privacy and personal data privacy. Do you think that governments in Germany or in Europe would want to put up similar posters in their airports? How would the people in Europe react as opposed to the, how the people in the US react? You can see here that even in the Western Hemisphere, there is a huge amount of cultural relativism and ethical relativism that leads to different consequences when you're dealing with the same ethical issue. So we see here therefore also that when we are applying the consequentialist and deontological approaches to ethical decision making in the context of emerging technologies, the result is even more difficult. For example, in the context of AI, often neither do the researchers clearly know what will be the possible consequences of their research, nor are they fully aware of their duties. Take for example, this image, perhaps many of you are familiar with it you will see that the Duke University students were attempting here to upscale a low resolution image and make it higher resolution using AI. But perhaps because of deficiencies in the data that was used to train the AI, you see that even a popular image or well-known image of Barack Obama got upscaled into the image of a white male, showing significant data bias. Now, do you think the students of Duke University intended this consequence? Perhaps not. Yet, we see in systems such as the AI Act, the consequentialist approach is very predominant. For example, in the planned AI Act in Europe, the word possible consequences or potential consequences arise several times, as you can see in this example that I have given here. So consequentialist approaches are actually getting codified in AI regulation. Now let's look in the second segment at how we can apply these basic understandings or concepts of ethics in the context of AI for Earth observation.